All right, I have some recommendations for how to use this category merchandising tool. We're gonna talk about these together, like how to use it as well as my recommendations in the process. So let's look at the Clayview Merchant Center. We see the visual merchandiser here um, under smart mer category merchandising. Uh, we have our default rules. And uh, what I want you to notice is the first thing is our manage categories uh, button. So we can click on this and pull this up. Now, what you'll find is interesting is we can select which categories we want to work with at once. So let's say we want to work with jackets and tanks at the same time. Now, while we might think from this user interface that we are going to be making the same uh, adjustments to both of those at, at this one time, like this is a rule of categories that we're going to apply these conditions, these these updates to. That's not how it works. Uh, you one thing, what it's saying here in this description is that we're actually applying locks on it, so nobody else can log in and make changes to these categories while we are making changes. So we click proceed. And we have a drop down menu here. This was a little confusing for me at the beginning. We can choose to work with jackets and add rules to jackets only, or we can work with tanks and add rules to tanks. This being in this screen right here does not apply to everything all at once. Just keep that in mind. So we can switch back and forth and create rules for either one as we desire. So I guess, hey, we're in tanks. Let's just uh, uh, start here. All right, default boosting rules, select add new. Now this is pretty powerful. Uh, we can select uh, to boost products that are in a specific category uh, or color or whatever we, we would like. Uh, so let's say manufacturer is Dewalt. We can also add a group which allows us uh, to use and and or logic, and then we can boost it. And remember, I don't think big boosts are necessary. I created a boost of two and a half which the default is one, and I didn't have a problem like this. It worked worked flawlessly. Uh, so what rules might we configure in this? Uh, you would might want to consider creating, for example, a new products. Um, if you want the products that are newer to your collection, um, you, we can use an attribute such as new from date or news to date. And remember, we set, set for those to be pushed up to Clayvu. Uh, in per store view um, under other attributes of search. So we can go in here and select, you know, these two and then save it, sync this product catalog up. And when we come back here, we could then, you know, filter by the new. Um, maybe sale items when I have instructions in my notes about that. Uh, we can promote based off of special events and you can create attributes, create as many attributes as you want, or ideally one attribute with maybe some, uh, some interesting, a, a multi-select attribute. So we would come over here into stores of, yeah, product uh, attributes, add new attribute. Um, and the, this would be a multiple select. And these might be like tags as far as like boosting tags. And that you could say like, this, this is a special event. Is this for Valentine's Day or Black Friday? Or um, is this, we could even just honestly use this for, is this a new product? Or is this on a special? Now, obviously you have to, you have, would have to separately manage that. Uh, if it's a new product of the, whoever is entering this content in would have to remember to also flag it in this attribute here. We could, we could say like rule boost uh, criteria criterion, I think that's how you spell it. Uh, and then we come over here into here and rule boost criterion. And then we can select any of those criterions to uh, to filter by, and then we can boost it up or down. Now, if you want, which is not uncommon to boost or to demote products so, or de-boost, i.e. pull it in this direction, products that are um, less well, out of stock or maybe they have lower stock, at that point, it will require your developer. There's no automatic way that I'm aware of to de-boost uh, some of those or even uh, the low stock items. So get your developer involved. It shouldn't be too heavy of a lift there. Um, but yeah, consider, consider something along those lines. So uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to discard these changes. Uh, but notice that I edited these two in the past together and uh, they come in here as separate. So keep that in mind. It's acquiring lock. It's about acquiring locks. It is not about editing a group of or applying the same rules to a group of categories.
A couple other features here, scheduled campaigns. I like this. This is very similar to uh, the Magento's uh, content staging idea where uh, you can create a set of rules for a given time frame. Uh, so we will click create new. Um, again, grab whatever categories we want. Uh, same same rules, et cetera, but then we can set some scheduling on this as well. So if we want to, you know, re revisit how our pro, uh, product sort order is around Black Friday, this is the tool that you use and it makes it pretty easy, especially with these rules. And finally is A-B tests. A-B tests are really uh, a great way to see what your customers like. Um, I have created a draft test here and you'll notice uh, that we I have three variants. So I have the base. This is like the default Clavy recommendation, but then I have variant B, which is some of my changes. Then we have variant C. So let's go and edit it and see what options are available here. And I would highly recommend if you have a high traffic, perhaps a low converting uh, category, run this through an A-B test. Like why not? Uh, so we can see, we select what our objective, our goal is. We select what categories this applies to. In this case, this is global. This is one set of rules applying to a number of categories. We set our test duration, uh, save and next. This is where the good stuff happens here. Uh, so we have our base. This is the default rule set, but then we can have, we have options. So we can either manually merchandise it, like pit our capabilities against the machine, or we can let the machine learn as well. Uh, so we'll, we can, when we comes down to selecting our manually merchandising option, we can click here to merchandise and voila, we have the same set of rules again. So we can uh, merchandise as desired here. You'll discard changes at this point. Um, but then you can funnel the traffic. So in this case, uh, let's say we have low confidence in our ability to uh, manually merchandise, but we're going to just give this a test. So we'll do this, say 45, 45, 10. It has to add up to be 100%. And at this point, we have 100%. So we're going to get some feedback, but it's going to take us a while running 10% of this traffic that is arrived on this page. It's going to take us a while to get some feedback on it. So, uh, you know, and if, or if we're feeling more confident about it, maybe we bump this up to be a 50 split, uh, 50 here, and then we have uh, 25 and 25. You know, something like that would work uh, pretty well. We can start this test right up and it's going to start giving us feedback as far as how uh, this this A-B test is performing. Again, this is data-driven. It's important for us to see what's going on, how is this working, and to really master our capability of merchandising. So Clavu is a wonderful tool. Don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic tool. But us still being involved is really, really important. And that's where Clavu, I think, really shines is it gives you plenty of and I'm going to say intuitive options, how you can customize your website. Really intuitive. It's not like this really super geeky stuff um, that I've seen with some other platforms. It's intuitive. Um, but it gives you, I feel like, just the right amount of control too. So um, utilize this here. Uh, you just use these A-B tests and be curious to see what type of results you get and learn from those results and make your categories all the better. Good job. Mm -hmm.